tubes. This is a kind of an interesting thing. I don't normally do this, but one of the people I had previously sold a lawnmower to, he manages properties. Each property gets a lawnmower. Um, he recently contacted me back through Messenger and asked me if I would, he wanted me to do a tune-up on this one, this, this toy build, just a tune-up. And as payment, he was going to give me this snapper, which has a starter on it in a bag. And that all-wheel drive Husqvarna, which is a, has a Honda engine, and with has a bag. So I said, oh, okay. So, so I'm gonna get to work on the tuning up the um, Troy built and getting that back to him today. Um, this just be a basic tune-up on it, just a regular tune-up. Hey tubes, just going through. This is I call this a mega score. Um, I've got, picked up these three lime hours. This one here that I got the recoil off right now is one I'm just, I'm tuning it up. And as payment for that, I get these two mowers here. This here is a snapper. Um, looks like it's rear wheel drive. It's heavy duty. And it has an electric start. Electric start probably doesn't work because the battery's dead. But it does have the key. Um, and I have the bag for it. This is a Briggs 675 Quantum. Uh, one of my favorite uh, engines. This other one here is a Husqvarna all-wheel drive with a Honda engine. Um, it, I, it has a bag too. This is probably 22 inch and this snapper, I'm not sure. It's either 21 or 22 inch, I'm not sure. So, but uh, I'm just gonna go through, show you uh, basic steps for a tune up on this Briggs, on this uh, Briggs, which is on a Troy built engine, a Troy built deck. I, uh, so, I had to take a pit stop. Okay, here's that Troy built, I'm tuning it up. Um, took, this is, he said it was his backup mower. I took the, Recoil off and lubed it up. It didn't want to recoil back, so what you do to fix fix that is you just spray some uh, WD-40 or something in there, and now it recoils. Um, sorry, I need a bigger bag tray. Okay, now I've got it on spark plug gun done. The first thing I'm gonna do is I don't know. Um, I know the over at his his residence. I I went ahead and um, we we turned the blade and uh, inspected the, the the shaft to make sure it wasn't bent and it's not. I'm trying to get this in the sunlight so I can have better. Uh, a better picture here so you can see this is full of dust there is something that resembles gas in the gas tank it doesn't smell good but uh, there is it feels like there is compression let's uh, me get a screwdriver so I can pry that open Okay. This isn't terrible, but he's getting a new filter anyway, so. Put that in my hoard of parts. And I'm going to take, I will be taking off the uh, carburetor to clean it. And I'll show you how you do that. Yeah, it feels a little stiff, the auto choke mechanism. So, first thing that happens is we um, take the gas tank off, clean it off, clean it out with a garden hose, 
leave it out in the sun to dry. One thing I just noticed is that this wasn't even hooked up into the back of the uh, back of the uh, air filter box, which isn't good. So you need it was sucking in that stuff. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, take uh, gas tank off. I need to do this. Just disconnect this anyway to get the carburetor off. Twist it. Okay, off comes the gas tank. Now I'm gonna let's go inspect the fuel in this. Quad inspection of the fuel, uh, which I don't think I don't know if you can be able to see. There is a little bit of water in it. You see, and there was junk in it. See if you can see it. Yeah. There's the, you can see the junk, but you can't see the water. There's bubbles in it. That's water. So, just gonna go clean out the gas tank with a garden hose. Let it sit in the sun. Uh, normally, I do w wash these before I work on them, but this time I'm not doing it that way because this one didn't look that bad. Let's go ahead and check the oil. Now, let's see. That's not good. Hardly any oil in it. Hardly any oil. Hope this thing's got compression. I thought it did. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some compression. So, let's see, I may be putting some used oil in it just to, if I have any, just to, eh, maybe not, I don't know. So, let's go ahead and uh, take the uh, carbur carburetor off. 930 seconds is one, and... Uh, 11, is this one? No. No. Let me go get the right one. Yeah, the other one's 5 sixteenths. I happen to have it on my drill already. So. <laughs> Trying to keep this in the light. So this one, this one's five sixteen. At least I thought it was. No, it's not. It's the these outer ones. They're five sixteen. And the inner ones are are nine thirty seconds. These are the equivalent I think of seven and eight or something like that so these are plastic screws so you don't want to tighten them up with a drill you can take them out with a drill We'll be cleaning, just cleaning that out. I'll probably just throw some water on it or something, let it dry in the sun. All those items are 
are uh, drying out. So let me get my brush so I can brush some stuff off here. This breather wasn't attached, which isn't good. It means it was sucking in unfiltered air. So, now, next thing to do, let me see if I can get a better vantage point for you. You got to take off the carburetor. You should just pull off, but you do have to worry about this auto choke linkage. Uh, you can actuate it and kind of bend it and get it off, or you can get it, take take this off here as you pull it out. Here, the uh, auto choke came off, goes here. Here's your throttle. Here you go. These are really easy to clean out. Before I uh, open these up, I like to, I mean, like to brush off or spray off all this junk up top with whatever cleaner I have at the time. This would be carb spray. Cut it off. Now these these are plastic bolts. They are nine thirty seconds. So I think it's there's eight eight or nine or something like that. We'll take it off as well. A metric. And this tray I'm using here is just an old cookie sheet that my wife didn't want anymore. Now, let's open up the carburetor together here. And what we do, trying to get a good angle here, is take a flathead screwdriver and you can kind of pry it out. This one's a little too big. Let me get a smaller one. So now let's I got a small flathead screwdriver and you can kind of get that in right here or here to pry it out. Sometimes they, they can be a little ornery to get out. Yeah, yeah, I got a screwdriver in there now. I can kind of just work it out. There is an O-ring here. Yeah, this had water in it. See, uh, see that milky fluid? That's water. So, gonna go clean these, clean this out. 
I'm gonna basically spray this out with some carpet spray and do that, do the same with this, but I gotta take this jet out here. But to get that, you gotta take this float out, you take the small flathead, you stick it underneath the hinge pin on both sides and it pops out. Here's the needle. Let's see. There's the needle. Here's your new style plastic rigs. I don't know anybody who really likes these, but they don't at least they don't corrode. Okay, I'm gonna spray out the bowl here with some carp spray. Do that. Set it aside. I've got a clean oh, shop towel over here, so also gonna wipe. I get get a spray it. Out, wipe it out too. So just gonna see. It's pretty clean now. Set that aside. Do the same with the float. Spray it off. Set it aside. Now comes uh, the carburetor, this other part of the carburetor. So first thing you're gonna do is just, just spray it out. Now, to get the main jet, what I call the main jet cartridge, or you need a small flathead screwdriver and you can, right here and here, you can kind of stick it in and you can pry it out. Or you can, some people take a pair of needle nose pliers or and pull it from from this from here I don't like doing that because I don't you run the risk of breaking this or some other or deforming it so I, I do it this way so let's see there Yeah, here's the main jet cartridge. Uh, you can buy just this. They're like $12 just for this. Um, so, gonna clean this out, run some wire through it. First, I'm gonna spray in here. Spray in, in here where, where it was seated. Uh, spray in the carb. Oh. The spray in the carburetor. You actuate it. Spray it through the air bleeds. There's another one there. One there. Spray it through fuel intake. Comes out here where this, where it, make sure that's clean. And spray it that way, the other way. It is. Okay, another thing to watch out for is this white retaining clip. Sometimes that'll, uh, in the gasket here, sometimes that'll stick to the mower. Uh, it needs to be in here, where you got the retaining O-ring here, and then the, the O-ring and then the clip, white clip here. 
Otherwise, you won't, it won't run right. Then set that aside. Now I'm gonna go clean this out. Let me go get my water. Okay, how we clean this off is first we spray it out. I don't know if you, you probably can't see. Right in there, there's a little hole for the jet. It's clogged so partially, so this thing wouldn't run. So you take a twisty tie from like a loaf of bread, stick the wire in there, or you can do this with like a very small drill bit. And uh, kind of just wiggle it around. Then take some carb spray. Now, some people I've heard take a 20,000 drill bit and drill it out. Okay, now I've gotten this cleaned out. Um, now I'm gonna put this back in. Now it, it only goes in one way, so you really can't screw it up. So, just uh, It should uh, just pop back in place. Time to reassemble the carburetor. So first, you got to get your needle. Make sure it's clean. Um, I'm gonna spray it off a little bit. Now these bolts you don't want to you you don't want to screw down too hard because uh, this is metal going into plastic. So don't torque it down too hard. Don't use a drill. Do it by hand. There you go. Time to uh, reinstall. Reinstallation. First, put on the, th uh, I think it's, put the throttle on. Okay, and at the same time we can get the, uh, well, yeah, put the auto choke linkage on. And then this should just slide in place. There we go. Now well, let's re reattach the breather, I mean the air box, and uh, let it rip. So, let's see, make sure the breather here is attached, which it wasn't, which isn't a good, which is not a good thing.
Get to my knees. Machine screws. Here, that hold locks to the frame. I'll torque those down later. These are 5 16 Leave a little bit loose so you can use those after a little bit if you can. Then, uh, 9 30 seconds. Are these plastic screws here? Oh. These, this is done. It's plastic, these are screws, no screws going in the plastic, so be careful. I had to step away for a little bit, run some errands, back now. Um, I put the gas tank back on, it's all connected. Uh, although this, oil, this thing had very little oil in it, so what I'm gonna do is just to get it warmed up, I've gotta, I gotta take some old oil that I got there in that drain case. I have no idea what weight it is. I'm gonna put it in it just so I can run it for a little bit and then I'll drain it out again. Okay, now for the first start. Uh, Lubed up the uh, brake cables with some penetrating oil. I'll, so let's go uh, see if this starts. I added some used oil to it just for now. Don't want to put in fresh oil for now. Let's see if you get a. There. first pull now uh, gonna go uh, do all the good stuff power wash it uh, sharpen the blade change the oil uh, so change the spark plug put, put an air filter in so won't show you that but uh, I was concerned with the, the oil being so low that it was not gonna work so. I just ran this lawnmower for <laughs> quite a bit <coughs> bit winded I mowed here my my side yard. Did a good job. Now I got a chance of oil since the top now. Just uh, draining out the oil here. It's pretty black. Just mowed my yard with it. And then I'll put some, uh, because it was so low, I'm gonna put some oil stabilizer and mixed with 30 weight of oil for this. So, these newer brigs, the only way you get the oil out is you drain it like this, you tip it over. The older ones had a drain plug, which is actually probably better, but. Oil of the day, Supertech HD30 and Supertech oil stabilizer. And I'm gonna mix it all up. Here, this is about 16 ounces. I think these newer brigs take about that much. If not, I could add more. Last thing of this tune-up, I already put a new spark plug in it, is to replace this air filter. So, got another one here, eBay. It had a kit, eBay had a filter and spark plug combination. So, now this is all tuned up. I'm just gonna give it a quick rinse off and I'll send it on its way. <coughs> I'll give you a last start here. The final start of this Troy built uh, TD 110 with a uh, Briggs 140 uh, cc overhead valve auto choke system. What I did to it was just a basic tune up uh, for a local uh, local person, and as payment, he gave me two lawnmowers. For, uh, so, what I did was clean the gas tank out, gave it a power wash. I uh, sharpened the blade, balanced it, changed the oil, cleaned the carburetor, new spark plug, new air filter, and uh, lubed up the recoil and uh, lubed up the uh, um, the brake cables. So let's uh, here's the final start. Next time.
see it too. Uh, here's that Husqvarna I got. It's a rear wheel drive Husqvarna, I believe. That was what it looks like. And um, it runs. Um, this is the one that I got, one of the ones I got when I tuned up the Troy Built uh, as payment. Um, it runs, I, all I had to do was squirt a couple squirts of carburetor spray into the carburetor and it started. So let me uh, show you here. Well, it did start. There we go. I'll probably clean the carburetor out. The rear wheel drive works. Oh. This probably needs a little bit of work. Um, it was filthy underneath. It, and it probably needs a new blade, which I have. Uh, going over here to the snapper. Uh, the bag that came in with it is brand new. It was never used, but I cleaned it out under, underneath. Uh, there's no gas in this, and I didn't try to start it, but, uh, so that's so why I'm going to leave it for the day. Later, tubes.